all the way from the USA, please help me welcome an internationally acclaimed poet, filmmaker, and activist, Miles Hodges. Oh, and, and, and ladies, ladies, please behave. Harlem, they, they ruled the world like kings and laughed at it like children do from history's dearest neighborhood. They never sang songs, but sang the innocence that their age bore all so foolishly with every sugary step down Lenox Avenue. Singing in tune with the sun as it traveled over their heads, peeking in and out of the project high rises, and it was summer. So the sun would shine down from that conceited as fuck spot in the universe and fill up 135th Street like an ocean. It would shine down and bounce up off the fire hydrant water littered broken crack pipe and homeless saliva sputtered park floor to curdle 10 feet in the air with a mix of sweat and leftover cigarette smoke. Roached blunts and roached joints were scattered around the purple, pink, and black chalked RIP signs as if whispering from the concrete jungle. I'm resting in peace and high. Why? Look at all the black kids scribbling their names into the cracks in the street. They're older than time and almost as old as the corner stores, the, the sweet fruit lemonade stands from which they sprang like trees, like dark colored dogwood trees, scaled the limbs, young brothers, as if they were monkey bars or unbagged drugs. These days it's pick your poison, I guess. <laughs> that color and they have reserved half of my body to call its own. So like half of me is, like my father was, like my grandfather was, like my great-grandma Annabelle too. She'd cook for you too, yes, you with the basketball hoop and foul line for a father, back pocket journal for a mother, and summer day to compare the rest of your life against this poem is for you to play the trust game with. It will catch you when you close your eyes and spread your arms out wide, fall backwards, use it as a shield when the inner city or the white man tries to shoot you down. Tell them to load their hands guns with rose petals and aim at your feet so when they shoot enough you can dance on those blood-colored clouds tell them to load their shotguns with slugs made of me and I'll prove to you that bullets do know what color your skin is when I pierce your chest and tiptoe vicariously around your lungs and light your heart on fire so it bursts into three parts you me and a rainbow us just just us no race, just us, and, and like our chained ancestors from this continent, Africa, before us, we will always sing, sing, singing strands of hope before they caught us, black-skinned symphonies with every note before they brought us face to face with the son of man and that poet, Holy Ghost, who sinned and said her only plan was to bathe in the endless water which still breaks from all those wombs of all those rape slave daughters, the rape slave mothers and sisters and fathers and brothers and lovers who cover their own children from their own screams and dreams and, and whiplashes if they could like Harlem does, like Malcolm X Little would have, like King stood bellowing at the future from every hillside and mountaintop. Freedom will come someday, but until then, as a culture in unison, we pray, sing, singing, I'll emancipate myself from mental slavery. None but ourselves can free our minds. I have no, no fear for atomic energy because the word nigga is a lot closer, the government is a lot closer, nicotine is a lot closer, Coke and Coca-Cola keep getting that much closer, so I have to make like the wind and run like it too, past the not so empty crack houses with the lost souls of men who killed themselves without committing suicide, drip down and climb up the walls like ancient Brazilian vines, so God, 
God of, of color, God of plague, God of, of happiness, socioeconomic status, and God of summer days. Break, break me, my light-skinned and my dark-skinned brothers off a piece of paradise. If not, hand me a pen. Point me in the right direction. If I have to, I will write all the colors of the rainbow away by any means necessary, as Mr. Malcolm would say. I am so grateful to be in a community of folks who, um, who push me to, to reconsider the stuff that, that I've written and to think about what it really means to be uh, a man in this world. Um, and, and my suggestion to the audience would be to, 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 to figure out who you are before, um, I mean, sometimes you don't have a choice, but to figure out who you are before you fall in love. Um, it, it, it makes, it, 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 it makes the loving and the receiving of love uh, a healthier and a truer process. Um, and, and for the fellas in here, uh, make sure that you're honest with yourself. Um, listen, listen to, to both the good things um, and the violence that is kind of built up in here. It, it's real, you gotta look it in the face. You gotta look it in the face. Um, but anyway, her toes, her toes were subtle, separate and royal, like the jeweled points in a king's crown that sat on the throne of her heels, and what a rough throne it was. Battered from long walks in the park at night and calloused from trying to dance away 400 years of slavery, jumping the broom in the cotton fields, a southern girl double dutch on the front lawn in a world moving just a little bit too fast gunshot arches in her feet can you feel me her ankles were two moons glowing in the dusk upon which legs that seemed to go just as far up rested halfway were knees known to move and to shake once all the lights go away when the music in the basement gets so loud your blood starts to hum your lower back folds into the wall and it starts yelling at you like like push back harder baby thighs made of hymns, I'll leave her inner thighs and inside for later in the piece. Her hips were glorified hula hoops, gym class rocking, catwalk popping, rush hour traffic, two red lights stopping. Her stomach was an African plateau, wishing well belly button by which children from all the surrounding villages walked miles to claim their life from. There was life in her chest, every curve, a mountainside slope, Kilimanjaro in these palms, read them. Now tell me where my future lies are you kissing me in it is there a, a bridge made of cobblestone of gold of kisses of love is there a bridge connecting me from wherever I'm going to be to your neck can I savvy on over it left right to the rhythm of it calling come hither make a garden out of me <laughs> daffodils and daisies and glory and all upwards more her chin moved like good sex when she spoke, right under her lips, damn near the, the safest cavern I've ever known, a hollowed out tree trunk at the end of the road. She could, she could beat back Boo Radley with the tricks she could do with them things, where, where I had all my tongue scratched love notes in her tongue was the Mississippi River, her, her, her cheeks. And her eyes were, were, her eyes were two lovers who'd, who'd seen some shit making love under red satin for hours. Don't stop, I can't move, but don't stop. Upwards more, ears of the oracle, of the Bible, of Egypt, and hair that reeked of southern trimming, of a picket white fence surrounding moat-like grass and a house. A, House with one of those big wraparound front porches, never ending picnics in Northern Virginia. Your head was, was great, baby. <laughs> but your mind was the night before a revolution. You could hear everything. 
You could see the future. You smelled like Sunday morning. You tasted like Sunday morning. Your breath was endless. Your touch was that of a deep maroon Native American tradition where the land wraps you in its arms like a bed after a long night downwards more where the insides of her legs came together, nothing but sweet raw flesh and nicotine. Summertime, she walked with her legs and her walk was mean the way a woman's should be, and her toes, toes could, could dig into the sand at 5 a.m. on the beach, face towards the waves, wind blowing just fast enough to feel it and prepare to watch the sunrise. But then again, when this man enters a room, he wishes to keep his chin up, to carry with him a continental smile and a heart, a heart that lifts the floor like a splintering brass chorus of drums and saxophones, Questlove and Coltrane marching to Gettysburg at my feet with shotgun improvs that grow and rock steady, playing like a humble bass line for the beautiful, the, the gorgeous shootouts that ring out throughout old Chicago jazz clubs and smoky New Orleans hallways. He is a man because he claims he's claimed his humanity, yet still walks with the melancholy whisper of everything mama couldn't teach him preacher couldn't preach to him on Fridays when the bar ends when the clouds unclench their fists I walk home empty pack of Marlboros in my back pocket girl I don't know so well under my left arm laughing too damn loudly I sit under a poster of Hendrix with Mona Lisa like eyes that follow me wherever the fuck I go and I wonder what is in a man wasn't always like that, though. Before the intrigue of standing tall swallowed my skin, every boy had a smiling father to dribble him. Every watch could stop, if you please. Every set of five fingers had a warm twin that fit. But since then, I've spent too many Sundays with the sun and girls just looking for dick. Thought I had a good one once, but now all I do is write black love poems. The only thing she hates more than me are mirrors. The only thing I hate more than love is not being in it. Call it crystal eyes or young of me to say, but some days I wake up wondering, where have all the trumpets gone? What makes a man, and what have they done with Motown's tongue? When did the sound of my own breath become not enough music to get me through the night, and why? Why can't we let ourselves go in the nighttime without fucking it up in the morning? In the morning, in the morning, wake me up like we died in each other's arms 12 hours prior and had been planning to do so on breath cue from the first time my lips cuddled your forehead. I know, I know my, my carpet may not taste as sweet as the Golden Gates, but you slept here last night, and somewhere between the, the Bankers Club and the eight ball from yesterday, I was reminded that a broken heart bleeds red, so now my past, my insides got you looking like a fresh murder. Could I be a man and clean that up for you? Could you, could you love me just as hard if I was weak and talk some shit out if I'd, if I'd rather picket fence my tongue quiet and slow like a stream across the whole navy van go of your body cheek to back in a curve of your thigh and I disappear and there's no more before, no more after, just a screaming white light rattling the inside of your skull like a drug addicted prisoner and a man, a man, I swear to God I'm a man trying hard, swearing to God I'm a man, looking down on his work like a lost diamond. Thank you so much for having me. Um, it is an absolute 
a pleasure, a, a pleasure to be here. I'm gonna read one more. Um, when it, it, it feels, it feels, it, it feels, I, I don't wanna, I wanna, wanna get corny and, and, and be one of those like American men who says, I, I feel home, I'm back in Africa, I feel home. <laughs> And, and, and yet there is something so spectacular about, about how you talk about your names and where your names come from. Uh, what I know about my name is that my, Miles, I was named after a jazz musician um, named Miles, Miles Davis, right? And that my, my, my last name was given um, to my great great grandmother by a white slave owner who had a different name. Um, and uh, I, I, in, in, in with, with fear of, of, of being corny and, and painting with too broad of a stroke, um, let me say that any time I have been, especially um, in, in, in this country, I have, felt, uh, I have felt very, very, very much uh, at home and and loved and and interested in uh, and and I just wanted to say freely from the from the bottom of my heart thank you so much for doing that for teaching me teaching me um, about yourselves and 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 teaching me about myself um, in so many in so many unique ways so thank you appreciate that. all right so once once upon somewhere. There was a young man with a mind a bit too in romance with lonely and a spine still learning to straighten. I write things down for a living. I spend most of my days either pissed off at gravity or amazed at the fact that right now there are eight billion people breathing as we speak. I do things like this and you call me an, an artist. You say of sorts, I should be a musician of the heart, but you don't know me or the hells in God if you did. And the truth is, I've, I've always been scared to tell the other side of the story, you know, the engine behind all of this. Now, my mama says all it takes is one look at the kid to tell I've been a rose-tongued wordsmith since birth, but, <laughs> but, but for real, for real, I ain't start bleeding ink until circa late junior high. You know, around the time back seats on school field trips started getting awesome, and, 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 and parentless cribs, what we lived for, pegs on the bike, could get all three of us home. I grew up playing ball until puberty made it very clear I would, in fact, never, ever start for the NBA Knicks. And, that's when I traded in the Nikes to ramble about flowers and, and pretty girls and shit. It was different back then. Back when it was just that pen and all my teenage rebellion, every stage seemed like a mountain and every poem opened its own Alcatraz of balloons. By high school, it wasn't just writing anymore. It was my best proof of God. It was bed for my buckets of misunderstood, a glimpse of sin and salvation in the same second. What were once journals were now holy purges and I learned just how fucking real the night could get with some paper and some secrets. When I was 17, I wrote something called Harlem. It was for you, for y'all. With the basketball hoop and, and foul line for a father, back pocket journal for a mother, summer day to compare the rest of your life against. Spit that in 08, DC, BNV. Russell Simmons took the shit, put it on TV. Like, look at the cute little white nigga with slave master blood in his veins. Look how pretty his pain is. Million views on YouTube, yeah, right? Miles Hodges, woo, woo, I got death threats, motherfucker. Dudes from the hood were like, hmm, come to my block. Let me find out how much you really know. And this one guy from Ohio said, I'ma kill you, mud blood. You and that darky colored father of yours. Nothing happened, of course. A year later or so, I wrote from head to toe. She was a writer, I fall in love damn easy. So I said, your head was great, baby, but your mind was the night before a revolution. And ever since then, women have sometimes treated me like some chauffeur to the moon. They come for their, their personal taste of mystery, of, of mannequin made of wind. They say, I'm not like most men and can tell I'm a poet by the way I eat pussy. But in the end, they run when my mask comes off. I was a freshman in college, I wrote What's in a Man? 
That shit wasn't even prose. I just couldn't understand why I have more hands than times. I've seen men cry more, more fingers than people I trust. Oh, maybe it's because you got a father that raised you more honest than kind. Said there ain't too much room for feeling things in a world that boxes 12 dirty rounds with your dreams. I'm 20-something I'm now, still trying not to believe them. 20-something now, still trying not to believe him. 20-something, and those poems took me to three continents this year, yet I still feel like mist, like steam everywhere, but right here, right here on this stage is where I spill my guts under these bright lights. I can't be touched right here is where you watch me slow dance with smoke right here is why me and Belle broke up this stage is why I don't eat like three or four nights a week because why risk a nightmare when I got a pack of 27s and a whole lot of work for this rolled up Franklin right here on this stage is where my stories become your currency and and I ain't mad I just want y'all to know what it feels like I just want y'all to know where I be at when I'm gone right here on this stage I ain't scared anymore.